The encore of their first sweep of the season was a lifeless offensive effort against a pitcher that the White Sox should have handled easily. They did not, and they fell to the Cleveland Guardians 3-0 and dropped to 19-30 and on the season. Jimmy Lambert and Jesse Schultens did their job in a tough place to play for our White Sox. No excuses for what the offense was not able to accomplish on Monday. Sox try to get back into the win column on Tuesday with Dylan Cease on the mound. You are locked on White Sox. Your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome back to Locked On White Sox. Thank you for making Locked On White Sox your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter at Locked On Sox. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, just search Locked On White Sox. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price uh, guaranteed. Hey, I'm your host Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan. Recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore. A GGTV Lockdown White Sox is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Our Chicago White Sox take on the Cleveland Guardians on Tuesday. Dylan Cease on the Hill catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search White Sox. Our Chicago White Sox now 19 and 30. Uh, after a lifeless effort, just pathetic on Monday in Cleveland. Sox are now 5-2 and two during this 13-game stretch against the AL Central. Uh, you know, pathetic, ugly, speechless. I mean, just shaking your head. If there was ever a shake-your-head moment, I mean, there's been a lot of them this season. Uh, absolutely. I feel like every week there are half a dozen Shake your head moments. Sometimes there's a half a dozen in a game. Hanser Alberto injuring himself, calling himself safe, trying to beat out a bump. That was a that was a shake your head moment. Uh, that's so White Sox type of moment. But you know they they brought me back in. They absolutely brought me back in, sweeping the Royals. And then that was the effort. That was the game they turned in on Monday. Complete disappointment after a fun filled weekend of baseball. Uh, don't get up for the letdown. Uh, that's what they say. But the White Sox are in the forgiving AL Central where absolutely anything can happen uh, for now. But whatever happened on Monday can't happen. It just cannot happen again uh, during this stretch here. Uh, after a big triple on Sunday, uh, Romy Gonzalez got his second start in a row uh, remember, this is what Rick Hahn said about Romy Gonzalez this offseason. Romy Gonzalez and all of those Sox hype videos that uh, we were uh, blasted with. He was going to be the starting second baseman before Elvis Andrews was signed. Uh, this was Rick Hahn. I think there's been nothing but rage about Romy Gonzalez this offseason from the coaches that have worked with him, uh, Rick Hahn said. Uh, they even had a player who went down and came back and came in my office in the offseason and said, don't you dare uh, trade that guy. Uh, well, this was Romy Gonzalez after Sunday's big 5-2 win where he contributed. Uh, it's tough when you're not playing every day, Gonzalez said, but you've got to stay as ready as possible. I've done a lot of work in the cages with assistant hitting coach Chris Johnson, and I prepare like I'm playing every day. Uh, baseball is definitely a long season. We play 162. You can't dwell on what's happened in the past. You just got to keep your head up and keep working. It's all you can do. Keep grinding. It was definitely a good day on Sunday and huge to get that sweep. Uh, so Romy Gonzalez uh, on Tuesday in Cleveland, 
0 for 3 with three strikeouts. But Romy's performance on Tuesday really, I thought, uh, captured the White Sox as a team, riding that high uh, and then completely face planting the next day. Uh, White Sox absolutely need to keep grinding, though. You've got to forget and flush Monday, as uh, Pedro Grifo loves to say. Uh, but is it going to be enough uh, after May? Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to look too much into June and July. You can't help it. I want to stay right here. Uh, but you got to take care of business during the rest of this stretch. Uh, the recent power rankings by the Athletic came out. White Sox moved up two spots after their five and one homestand. Uh, they come in at 25th in all of baseball. Uh, their last power ranking was 27th. Here was the write-up. Nice week for the White Sox after winning two of three against the Guardians and sweeping uh, the Lonely Royals. It was the kind of week that should be expected. Uh, losing five of six to those two teams would have said more about their problems than winning all, but one says about their merits. Uh, at a granular level, the Sox are trying to fix some pitching mechanics to get right, with Lance Lynn and Dylan Cease tweaking their motions for better results. This team, though, is beyond the tweaks. They are the third worst team in the league. They're looking down at the Royals and A's, two historically bad teams. Maybe the Sox aren't a good team, as constructed, uh, but they shouldn't be this bad. Uh, we are not here to lobby for cleaning house with the roster, or even the front office. It just seems like the Sox are waiting for a big idea, any idea for getting right, either this season or into the future. They are beyond the need uh, for tweaks. Um, you know, there's a lot of smoke uh, surrounding this uh, Tim Anderson, maybe to the L.A. Dodgers uh, situation. Uh, Bob Nightingale talked about it recently in his USA Today column on Sunday. And there were a few articles that I found online uh, from a Dodgers perspective of what it would be like to get Tim Anderson on their team. They are in need of some shortstop help. And they want that. Uh, they want what they think uh, is a lively bat at the top of the order. It hasn't been that way for a while uh, for us, but, a uh, lot of talk uh, right now. So uh, do yourself a favor and check out some of those articles, you know, because the, the L.A. Dodgers, they have a top three farm system. And the White Sox, I mean, we're talking zero depth uh, at catcher in the farm system for sure. And, and really, you know, how much more can we expect from Yaz with those legs catching wise? Uh, and, I, you know, you're not going to see Yaz in a White Sox uniform after this season, in my mind. Uh, so. And really, in terms of starting pitching, we have very little depth, ready-to-go depth, uh, obviously, with what we saw on Monday uh, with the Jimmy Lambert one inning and then Jesse Schultons. Uh, the offseason was, was a failure in that department for the White Sox. Dodgers have some prospects. Uh, so this might be, you know, an ongoing drama uh, for the White Sox and the L.A. Dodgers uh, if they can – get this thing going. Um, so take, take a look at it. I don't know. I, I, again, with this division, it just feels like it's way too early. It's way too early, but I'm sure the Sox are fielding some phone calls. Uh, I am sure there are teams saying, Hey, Rick Hahn, keep us in the loop. Keep us in the loop with what you plan on doing here. But again, with the AL Central, yeah, I think you have to wait. You have to wait till the last minute, and you better get a haul. But a lot of smoke around TA to uh, the LA Dodgers. Prior to Monday's series opener, the Sacks recalled right-handed pitcher Jesse Schultons from uh, AAA. Schultons uh, takes the roster spot of right-hander Mike Clevenger, uh, who was placed on the 15-day injured list uh, retroactive to May 18th for a right wrist inflammation. Schultens, uh, two and two with a 3.99 ERA, uh, 230 opponents average and 42 strikeouts over seven starts with Charlotte this season. He appeared in two games with the White Sox in April, going 0 and 1 uh, with a three flat ERA and four strikeouts. Uh, Tim Anderson and Andrew Vaughn returned to the starting lineup. Vaughn dropped in order to the sixth spot. Uh, Berger went back to the eighth spot. 
that I pitch machine that he's been using along with other White Sox players at home uh, that traveled to Cleveland. Uh, James Fegan had the photo on Twitter. Uh, didn't seem to help the White Sox at all on Monday, unless they just felt like they were way overprepared uh, and they felt way too confident uh, trying to do too much. I don't know. Uh, Robert, uh, having an amazing May, there's no doubt about it. Uh, didn't get much of anything from him uh, on Monday. Romy, again, got the start at second base, uh, three strikeouts, and Jimmy Lambert uh, was the opener for an inning for Schultons. Uh, so talking about Lambert in Cleveland, I mean, he did start a game in Cleveland on April 20th last season, uh, three and two-thirds of an inning, five hits, two earned runs, uh, prior to Monday's spot start, he had not pitched in a while. Uh, Hunter Gaddis was on the hill for the Cleveland Guardians on Monday. Uh, Gaddis allowed seven runs on eight hits with one walk and three strikeouts in four innings against the Sox last year, September 15th. Of those eight hits, five of them were White Sox home runs. It was Gaddis's only appearance against the Sox before Tuesday. Uh, Ramirez was in the lineup for the Guardians. Josh Naylor was not. Uh, you really couldn't ask for anything more out of Jimmy Lambert and Jesse Schulten. Sox offense, though, was nowhere to be found. Uh, more on that uh, in a moment. Today's episode is brought to you by So Rare. Our new sponsor, So Rare, is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 MLB teams. Unlike other fantasy baseball platforms, So Rare managers truly own their fantasy experience collecting, buying, selling, and competing with player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards, win or lose. You still own your cards, and there's no cost to play. Plus, the more you win, the more you advance, collecting increasingly powerful cards and accessing next-level competitions and rewards. Head to SoRare.com slash LockedOn. That's spelled S-O-R-A-R-E.com to draft your team of free player cards, set your lineup, and start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, that's so rare.com slash locked on to start playing today. The White Sox visit again, Cleveland Guardians on Tuesday. Uh, catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Search White Sox. Uh, it was a rough one on Monday. Three nothing Guardians. Uh, first inning. You got Gaddis on the hill. Again, the Sox know what they did against Gaddis. Uh, and, you know, with this eye pitch or just, you know, basic preparation, watching video, you got to be going in feeling pretty confident. Now, Robert did have a two-out two, two out base hit uh, in the first, but he was caught stealing uh, second base. Bottom of first, here comes Jimmy Lambert. After a Rosario single, Lambert got Ramirez to pop out in a changeup, low and away, walked Josh Bell, hoping to stay away from giving up runs with two outs. Uh, Lambert got Jimenez to fly out to left field. Ben Attendee had to hustle to the line, but no harm, no foul. Uh, only 20 pitches uh, for Jimmy Lambert. I shouldn't say only. That's not a... <laughs> That's not a low amount, but still, it could have been worse for a guy that hasn't pitched in a long time. Uh, top of second, nothing for the White Sox. Bottom of second, Jesse Schultons now arrives. A uh, leadoff walk to Arias. Uh, Brennan, base hit through the left side. I think I saw something on social media that this ball hit a bird in its uh, flight. Uh, trouble brewing with the first two on for Schultons. Uh, he was sitting at 93 miles per hour, uh, but he was catching too much of the zone, I thought, right off the bat. He was trying to work outside a little bit, needed to go further out. Zanino uh, missed a hanging slider uh, by Schultons and thankfully popped it up, one away. Uh, double steal by Cleveland. Yaz went to second and threw out Brennan. Uh, two away. And then there was a wild pitch. It was called a wild pitch, but it should have been a pass ball. Yaz just refused to move his feet and attempted to just backhand a pitch in the dirt. It got away and Arias scored uh, one nothing Cleveland. It was, it was like that for a while. 
top of third. Gaddis was coming in now at 95 miles per hour, struck out Berger on a high fastball, uh, then a really nice 12 to 6 curveball. Got Romy for uh, his sec uh, for Gaddis's second strikeout. Uh, not much after three for Sox offense, uh, just one hit. A uh, bottom of third, Quan with a leadoff double. Ben Attendee got there quickly, but Quan was going full blast out of the box. That's what some of these guys on Cleveland will do. We've seen it uh, for a while now uh, from Quan, especially last year. Uh, Schultons fielded his position well to get uh, out number one and prevented Quan from advancing. Ramirez, low liner to left, caught by Ben Attendee, and Quan was doubled up. Nice job by Schultons and the defense to keep Cleveland from scoring, uh, hoping Sox take advantage of that mistake. Uh, they did not. Top of four, uh, second time now through the lineup. Uh, Tim Anderson, lazy fly ball to center field. Ben Attendee hustling all the way. It was a one-out double to right center. I know Ben Attendee does not have a home run. I know he was paid $75 million, but this guy can play left field. And he gets on base. I feel like the doubles are starting to come too. Maybe, you know, maybe it's just, I don't know, when I'm paying attention, which I'm paying attention just about every single pitch. But when he's up, it's like, here we go. There's another double in the gap from Ben Attendi. We want more. I know that. But uh, I'm not completely disappointed uh, with Andrew Ben Attendi. Uh, so this was a big at bat for Luis Robert Jr. He worked uh, the count full and struck out on a 90 mile per hour cutter low and away. Uh, Mancata was hit by a pitch. Sheets popped out. Uh, missed opportunity to really get to Gaddis. A uh, bottom of four. Schultons had 32 pitches on his arm. A nice, easy inning. A uh, top of fifth. Nothing. Sacks with two hits, zero walks, three strikeouts after five innings. 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position. A uh, bottom of five. Schultons. Uh, he started to really look comfortable uh, eating innings and doing his job exactly what we needed out of him in a tough place to play. Now, Cleveland was ranked 30th in all of baseball in terms of offensive production, hitting 228 as a team. If you are going to use a guy like Schultons, uh, Cleveland, I, I would assume, would be the preferred opponent. Uh, just stay away from making mistakes. Do not allow free passes to their speedsters, and you should be all right. Uh, top of six, Romy Gonzalez struck out for the second time uh, with one out. T.A. drew the first Sox walk. Uh, he kicked uh, kicked off the third th time through the order uh, for the White Sox against Gaddis. Uh, Cleveland had their bullpen up. Sox had multiple pitches to hit, but just could not execute. It just looked like they were trying to do way too much, maybe over swinging, pressing a little bit. I, I don't know what it was. They had the they had the pitches. It's not like Gaddis was completely overpowering. Uh, bottom of six, leadoff walk to Quan. So good speed aboard. Quan made it to third on a sacrifice fly by Ramirez. Uh, a big moment here. Got to keep it a one run game. Josh Bell uh, had him one two. Outstanding work. Lots of emotion from Schulten. Struck out Josh Bell on an eighty three mile per hour slider on the outside corner. Great sequence, great re results. It stayed a one-run game. Schulten's line, five innings, two hits, one earned run, shouldn't have been. That was on Yaz. Uh, two walks, one strikeout. Top of seven, uh, Cleveland went to their sixth-ranked bullpen in all of baseball, left-handed pitcher uh, Henges uh, on the hill with one out. Frazier pinch hit for Sheets. He drew the second walk of the game for the White Sox. Base hit by Vaughn to right field. Sox have a guy now in scoring position. Big run out there. Yaz can totally redeem himself from that pass ball that was called a wild pitch earlier in the game to allow the only Cleveland run to score at this point. Yaz struck out looking at a 96-mile-per-hour fastball in the inner third. Berger with a broken bat, infield looper that was caught for the third out, nothing. Uh, bottom of seven, Crochet now in uh, for the first two outs. Looked good, looked in control. Nice to have a power lefty uh, coming out of the pen now. Santos came in with two outs, runner at second, to face righty Zanino. It was all about matchups, all about numbers. Uh, with how Zanino has performed against lefties. They went with the righty Santos. Uh, Santos had some movement at the beginning of the at-bat, 98-mile-per-hour sinker, 
Uh, lots of movement going on. Then Zanino hit a two-strike, 99-mile-per-hour sinker that did not sink for a two-run home run to make it 3-0 Cleveland. You cannot miss that much in the zone on a 2-2 count. Uh, absolutely unreal. Uh, Chuck Garfine had tweeted out, Mike Zanino was 1-for-31 in the month of May before that home run. Uh, Sox did nothing in the top of the ninth, and why should they? Sox pitching, you just can't complain about what Lambert and Schultons did. I mean, Santos made a mistake. Maybe he thought he could get away with it because of who was at bat, but Zanino made him pay. Sox offense was the real embarrassment on Monday. Zero runs, three hits, one extra base hit. Uh, that was that double by Benatendi. Sacks were 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. They left five runners on, uh, only two walks, nine strikeouts. According to James Fegan on Twitter, post game, uh, Pedro Grafol approved of the job Jimmy Lambert and Jesse Schultons did, and they'll need to fill another turn in the rotation. Maybe we'll do it again, Grafol said. Cited Zanino's career numbers against left handed pitching for opting for Santos said they'll have to go over offense's two-strike execution. You think? Uh, the only loss uh, during the most recent homestand was against the Guardians, and Dylan Cease was on the mound. Cease looks to redeem himself uh, and get the Sox back on track. More on that uh, in a moment. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up. Uh, to the day of the event, get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account. And use code LOCKDOWNMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKDOWNMLB for $20 off. Download the Game Time app. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Socks at Cleveland still. It's game two of the three-game series. Uh, Dylan Cease has a 4-4 four and four record uh, with an ERA of 3.81 and 49 strikeouts in 10 appearances against the Guardians in his career. Uh, Dylan Cease faced the Guardians on May 18th during the last homestand, took the loss. He went six and a third, uh, five hits, three earned runs, one walk, only three strikeouts. Uh, this was Cease after last Thursday's game. Just filling up the zone and getting those early outs. It's nice for going deep. Uh, unfortunately, in those last couple of innings, I wish I, I took it to another gear. So, look, we, we know what's going on with this Cleveland offense. You don't want to take him for granted and just throw a mistake middle-middle. Okay, as we saw... On Monday, Zanino, who has been scuffling, was able to take, hey, a 99-mile-per-hour uh, pitch, but it missed. It missed its spot, and he took it out. Uh, the Cleveland Guardians are on speed. You know, they're on taking bases on you. They're on situational hitting. Uh, they're not on power. Now, Cease, I just hope, doesn't overthink too much. You know, go after uh, this lineup pump the strikes in, fill up the zone, the whole two out of three mentality. First uh, two pitches of, of your three should be for strikes. You know, have some competitive pitches when you're 0-2 or with two strikes. Have a good solid game plan. Live off of what happened on Monday. And the offense, just they absolutely have to get back on track somehow, some way. I mean, the power just hasn't been there uh, since last week when we had back-to-back -back games with three home runs in each game, and it was ball go far, team go far, here we go. Uh, it went quiet. 
You know, Robert Jr. had a home run on Sunday that just barely got out, but it was it was big. We finally got back with the home run. We need some offense on Tuesday. Uh, and and if you're not going to have the home run ball, you have to figure out ways uh, to get runs because I just I don't think it's going to be a high scoring game. You know, but n- knowing what has been going on with our White Sox, maybe it is a high scoring game. But I think Cease is going to learn from his outing last Thursday. I think he's going to quiet the Guardians, but the bats absolutely have to show up. You know, it might not look pretty, uh, but the White Sox just need to win. Uh, you got two more with Cleveland and then a big uh, four game uh, series in Detroit uh, coming up. Thanks so very much for making this podcast part of your daily routine. You can find the Lockdown White Sox podcast absolutely everywhere you find your podcast. We're on Twitter at Lockdown Sox. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTV. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get your questions in, any comments, suggestions, what have you. We are, we are due for a mailbag episode. You can do that at LockedOnSocks at gmail.com. White Sox take on the Guardians on Tuesday in Cleveland. Catch every pitch of the White Sox hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search White Sox. Thanks for making Locked On White Sox your first listen every day. Hey, every dayers, on the next episode, I will recap Dylan Cease's outing, hopefully be talking about a White Sox winner. Really appreciate you making time for the Lockdown White Sox podcast. I'm Nick Murawski. Until next time, go Sox.